Hey guys, how's it going? How's everybody doing? Anyways, um, I just thought I'd come out and make a video because I haven't made one for a few days. So I hope you didn't miss me too much. But anyway, please rock the like. I would really appreciate that. And um, also check out the links in the description box down below. You'll find a link there to our Telegram page, also to a guided meditation, and also a link to Ishmael website, where you can find all his courses and also the two books that he has, Our Cosmic Origin and The Secret Government. Hey guys, thank you for being here. Um, I've got this article that I'm going to share with you guys, so... I uh, hope you're all doing well, um, yeah, and um, also he, you know, Ishmael just did a live about a few hours ago, so that was really awesome, thank you Ishmael for all the amazing information that you put out, we are just so, so appreciative of all the hard work that you do, my brother, I just thank you so much, thank you from my heart to yours, thank you so much, all right, so, Anyway, so I've got this article right, and we've been learning about um, our galactic families, star seeds, way showers, light workers, UFOs, aliens, you name it. We've been we're we're doing it, guys. We're just going all out and learning about everything because we just got to. Okay, we just got to. We've got to expand and learn and grow and. This is what Earth School is all about, right? It's all Earth School for us. So, without further ado, let's get into this um, article right here. And um, let's just keep learning, guys. Let's just keep learning, growing, evolving, all right? And also, man, the um, energies that are coming are not too... Not to forget to mention that the energies that are coming in, they're pouring in. So guys, you know, hydrate, okay? Plenty of water. Now I got a message that came in this morning and that message was, you know, drink lots of water. Drink lots of water because I mean it's gonna you're gonna start feeling a little bit dry in the mouth, you know, at times and is you know the back of your throat's gonna be like hey you know screaming out for a little bit of uh, water so have a drink plenty of water lots of clean water especially water without any fluoride chlorine or any chemicals in it nothing that tastes like metal right um, and hence a lot of the tap water that we get these days just tastes like metal and a bit of a um, uh, what do you call it and an, um, aluminum or some kind of taste that it has in it it's just gross anyways so without further ado let's get into this um article that i've got okay guys all right so yeah please rock the like um what else can i tell you uh before i get started um apart from you know new zealand we're going through the fall at the moment so it's a little bit chilly and um, all that kind of stuff and good stuff and things like that lots of um, lots of uh, energies that are coming in here in New Zealand as well now the thing is is that you know it's been a few wet days so I'm not going to get out there and hug any trees because all the trees are wet and um, you know I don't fancy <laughs> hugging a wet tree so anyway i'm going to do my best with um and this is the one thing that you can do guys is that um when you are grounding and things like that if you can't get out in nature um by all means go and put a video on go to, go on youtube Find a, a YouTube video that has beautiful nature background music and everything in it. Usually they've got Benora beats and then they have some kind of nature that goes with it. It's amazing guys, it's amazing. So if you can't get out like I can't, I, I could, but I don't fancy how hugging any, you know, wet trees or anything like that. It's a little bit wet out. So if you can't get out in nature, get on YouTube, find a video 
and ground that way all right visualization wow a lot of power in that all right guys manifestation lots of visualization all right um likes attracts likes and energies attracts energy all right okay all right that's enough rambling <laughs> okay i think sometimes i just like talking to you guys and just giving you an update of, of where i'm at and what what's up you know what's up and and i tell you what guys okay okay give me a minute <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I'm just, these days, I just find myself so happy. Like, I'm, I'm like, in this vibration, frequency of happiness, and I don't even know why, you know? And no, I haven't had anything, okay, so don't even think about it, alright? <laughs> hmm, I don't know what it is, and, and I, I, oh, I just feel so happy so happy alive vibrant and just <laughs> all right anyway okay so the explanation of all or many strange phenomena and manifestation is the physical expression of thought forms that reside in the collective unconscious of humanity through energy visible forms and physical forms that might seem strange to most people, but it is a concept that has always been known among magicians and in historic circles. Thought forms exist in another reality parallel to our physical world. It could be a mental world, a virtual world, an etheric world, or astral world. It is real and it exists on a higher energy level so guys what i'm reading to you guys is about the mental creation the collective unconsciousness or unconscious all right not this just unconscious so mental creations and the collective unconscious so some guy called carl juan brought forth the concept of the collective unconscious and he showed us how strong its content is in driving the actions of human beings. Quantum physics also has helped to bring back the notion of higher dimensional worlds and, the, and to observe or observed interactions. Matter is not viewed anymore as solid. Billard boards are but energy packets that have both a wave and a particle function. In our modern scientific oriented, oriented world, we have largely done away with the spiritual mental aspects of our being. However, the immense power of thought forms continues to manifest itself in ways we don't associate with our collective unconscious. The entire UFO phenomenon including the many psychic and paranormal phenomena and the sightings of cryptic beings. It doesn't matter if scientists deny them. These thought forms are real. The collective unconscious is not just some abstract idea. It is alive and it is endowed with energy and consciousness. So are thought forms. The collective unconscious is also very creative and often expresses itself symbolically. Something to keep in mind with the UFO phenomena. When thought forms manifest themselves in the physical world, they do so in a way determined by both the collective unconscious, unconsciousness and the personal consciousness. When a phenomenon manifests itself, it uses the collective unconscious to form the general shape. But the witness will determine the details according to what he already has in his own mind. The more people have a thought form in mind, the stronger the forms is 
and the more defined. It is also easier for it to manifest itself in the physical world. It is also easier to intentionally bring it into the physical manifestation by turning it into it. And collective thought forms are easier to bring into manifestation than a thought form in one's own personal consciousness. Please rock the light guys, I would really appreciate that. So thought forms and astral realm. Esoteric doctrines have been saying it for a long time. Everything is energy. Modern day quantum physics tells us the same thing. There is no solid matter, only energy packets with, dis with densities and frequencies. When frequencies reach a certain threshold, matter loses its mass and enters the higher vibrational state in the real astral realm. This astral realm is not some vague or vaguely abstract concept. It is real, but quite different. The physical world has its three dimensions plus time and plus time and governed by physical laws so the astral world has its own dimensions and laws astral space and time is different it is what physics call now the non-locally state of being on the astral level one perceives distance but one can move from one point to another instantly. Time is not measured by the clock but by the succession of events or change. So remember guys like um, if you have any questions bring all of those questions please to Ismail Perez whenever he does a live have those questions ready for him. Okay guys so I'm sharing a whole lot of information here and if there's anything that sparks an interest in you, right, and you want to know the answers for that, bring all those questions to Ismail, please. Alright, so the astral world is where people go after physical death. From near-death experiences, we know that their souls still have body and they find themselves in environment resembling those on earth. They are all thought constructs. The mind of the departed soul still has the habit of identifying with a body form and being in a familiar environment. Hey guys, you know, I do share in my videos and I do share this a lot that we do not identify with these vessels avatar bodies okay that is not who you are who you are is soul spirit consciousness awareness so do not identify with your body it's like saying okay this is my car i identify as my car really <laughs> come on guys you know that's not true so your vessel your avatar your body is what you embody all right and you are the soul, spirit, consciousness that embodies this vessel, this vehicle. Okay? <laughs> I just had to get that out there. Alright. So the mind of the departed souls still has the habit of identifying with the body form and being in a familiar environment. Houses, gardens, meadows, trees, flowers, etc. As astral substances, shapes itself immediately according to thought forms the souls are thus creating an astral body for themselves and an astral environment around them these are all thought forms no more no less the only they only last as long as the mind of the soul keeps these forms alive all right so when we, in the physical world, think we create thought forms on the astral level, at that level, 
they are experienced as real. Although most thoughts don't last long. Only persistent or repeated thoughts fueled by emotions will last longer. When a person thinks of himself, of being at or at another place, a thought form of himself will be created at that place. Such a thought form of a person usually can only be seen by a person with psychic gifts. For such a thought form to be visible or ordinary people, it must have enough energy or charge from its creator or by a local energy supplier in earth energies. In Tibet, this is called a tolpa, but this phenomenon is also known in the West. When we think of everything else that will take shape too on the thought level, and if circumstances are right, that thought object can become tangible or visible in the physical world. This is how magicians work in their beneficial or, ben or malevolent practices. The problem with most thought forms in the collective unconscious is that they were formed by mankind's negative emotions. There is so much emotions, sorry, there is so much negativity in the world from personal jealousy and anger to the world wars that the collective unconscious is full of nefarious content. We are responsible for it and if we don't dissipate all these unresolved conflicts residing in our conscious mind, it will continue to haunt us. The collective unconscious continues to simulate us in further negative behaviour, but it can also interact physically with us by manifesting visually and even physically, and that includes apparent physical beings of many strange appearances. Alright, persistence of thought forms. Alright, how are we doing? Please lock, rock that like. Thank you. The astral realm has many different levels and one of them is the personal unconscious of an individual and the collective unconscious of humanity. This level contains the thought forms we create constantly. They come and go, but some thought forms have longer lifetimes because of the constant or repeated concentration on them, or because they are highly charged with emotions such as anger, hate, and wars, etc. They can take undefined forms or well-defined forms. These thought forms will also shape themselves according to mental images we already have in mind. So when a person attracts an astral thought form, it will tend to show itself to an image that person already has in his own unconscious. Thought forms tend to want to stay alive, but for that they need constant, constant supply of energy. When people let go of certain emotions, that have generated a thought form, then that thought form will dissipate. Keep the emotions going and the thought forms stay alive. They then again a certain they then gain a certain consciousness and will influence people to keep on generating these emotions in order to grant gar guaranteed its own supply. All right, hold on a second, guys. All right, just go back to that. So then gain a certain consciousness and will influence people to keep on generating these emotions in order to guarantee its own supply of energy food. This can be a vicious cycle. It is also important to know 
that the human physical body is sensitive to these astral thought forms through this nervous system, the brain, spine and nerves. That is how we sense these thought energies, but we can also be influenced and even controlled by them. So the individual or collective unconscious is full of thought forms or mental creation made by billions of people over the many centuries. Tolpas. All right. So this is, uh, hmm, please rock that like and subscribe for you girl. And the uh, Tepetan or Tibetan, okay, in the Tibetan magical tradition and international creation of thought forms which can be seen by others but also materialized is called a tolpa. They can also be created unintentionally and the word tolpa originates from Tibetan or Sprulpa, which means to let emanations go forth. Alexandra David Neal writes in his book with mystic and magic or with mystics and magicians in Tabit. First published in French in 1929 in chapter 3. What a tulpa is based on document provided to her by the Dalai Lama or Dalai or Dalai Lama or Dalai Lama. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so a bowl his tiff, all right, I don't know how to pronounce that, a being who has attained the high degree of spiritual perfection immediately below that of a Buddha is the basics of the countless magic forms by the power generator in the state of perfect concentration of the mind he may at one and the same time show a phantom tolpa written sprulpa of himself in thousands and millions of worlds. He may create not only human forms, but any forms he chooses, even those of inanimated objects, such as hills, enclosures, houses, forests, roads, bridges, etc. He may produce atmospheric phenomena, as well as the thirst quenching beverage of immortality. The later expression that they have advised to is to take in both a literal and symbolic sense. In fact, reads the conclusion, there is no limit to the power of phantom creation. However, the act of creating a thought form that can manifest itself materially is not limited to such highly evolved beings. Less stable or temporary manifestation can be achieved by more ordinary beings. Right, let's keep going. In the next chapter, eight. Hold on a second, guys. Alright, so visualizing mental formations, either voluntary or not is most mysterious process. What becomes of these creations, may it not be that, like children born of flesh, these children of our mind separate their lives from our escapes, our, our, from ours, escape our control and play parts of their own. All right. So Alexandra David Neal tells us that some tolpa and created on the purpose either by a lengthy process resembling the visualization in the case of proficients adepts instantaneously or almost instantaneously. <clears throat> so Yim Mam or Yi Dam or Y Dam as a type of deity associated with tantric 
or Vajrayana Buddhism, said to be manifestation of Buddhahood or enlightened mind during personal meditation. Sananda practice the yogi identifies their own form attributes attributes and mind with those of a yi dam or e dam for the purpose of transformation. In other cases the author of phenomenon generates its unconsciously and is not even in the least aware of the apparition being seen by others. In this regard she tells us about seeing a young Tibetan approaching from a hill. When he was close he walked behind a shortened or a small shrine and disappeared. Later that day the real man arrived. On another occasion a Tibetan painter or a third worshipper of the wrathful deities who took a particular delight in drawing their terrible forms came one afternoon to pay her a visit. Behind him she noticed a somewhat nebulous shape of one of the fantastic beings which often appeared in his paintings. She walked to the apparition with one arm stretched in front of her and her hands reached the foggy form. She felt as if touching a soft object whose subject gave way under the slight push and the vision vanished. The painter had been performing a rite during the last few weeks, calling on the deity whose forms are his form she had dimly perceived and that very day he had worked the whole morning on painting of some of the deities. In this case the visual tulpa or apparition was also formed unconsciously. The painter himself was not aware that he had created his thought form. Nice. Alright so let's keep going with this. All right, now for the double gangers, as a double double gangers, double gangers. All right, double gangers is a German word meaning double walker. The word became in vogue during the 18th century, but the apparition of a living being was well known in all Western countries and past ages. We can even go back to the ancient Jeep Egypt where the car was the spirit double of a person. The manifestation of a double created consciously or unconsciously was also referred to as the as by location and is also known with some saints such as Saint Alphonus or Marie de Lugoro. Okay, yeah, that's complicated name to pronounce there, okay. Saint Anthony or Padua or Yusulava, my Kaisla or Maratha Saint Gerald. Okay, I'm not going to mention all of those names because they are just tongue twisters for me. Sorry, guys. So bear with me. So non-saints had double gangers too. John Donne, the English metaphysical poet, saw his wife's double ganger in 1612 in Paris on the same night as the stillbirth of their daughter. The famous German poet Johann Wolfgang von Geoth had a rather unusual encounter with his own double ganger. All right, so in this regard, one can assume that one can assume that mind was able to access their probability future and thus create thought form 
that would reflect their appearances at that time. In the realm of thought forms, the future lies as probabilities. Some events are more probable as others. Unconsciously created doppelgangers are usually created by people who already have psychic abilities, are sensitive to spiritual energies, or are involved in magic. Hmm. All right, here's a little bit of info about Alistair Crowley. We all know who Alistair Crowley is, right? 1875 to 1947 was an English poet too, but also an occultist, writer and magician. In his biographical book, The Confession of Alistair Crowley, chapter 26, he writes about his double been seen by others. This happened after he started to develop out-of-body experiences or astral projection, what he calls the body of light as the astral body. The reason why his astral double became visible to others was that it was charged up with a lot of energy. This is a general requirement for thought forms of the personal or collective unconscious to be able to become visible in the physical world. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Okay, so all this shows that when sufficient psychic energy is available, a thought form can manifest itself visibly. A double or a couple of one self that does not have or be a static image that can act by itself as a normal person. Thought forms can also take the shape of other kinds of beings in historic circles they are usually called natural or artificial elements. Alright, let's have a look at artificial elementals. In the lower regions of the collective unconscious, or the lower astral world, there are beings, intelligence, that are known to be disruptive in the lives of historic seekers. They often pretend to be benevolent and helpful, but they are deceptive and negative. Negative. <laughs> In historic circles, it is known that the higher dimensions contain not only the human discarnate souls, but also other intelligent beings, some from other places in the universe, but they rarely interact with humans on the physical plane. Most of the paranormal activity and the alien manifestations are from the lower regions. But who are those lower beings? Some are natural elementals. They are usually thought to be creatures of the four elements. The gnomes, the earth, nymphs, and andes and mermaids. Mm, mermaids, water. Sight, air, and salar, salamanders, salamanders, fire, divas, are guardian spirits of the plant kingdom. Okay, Dion Fortune, 1980, 1990 to 1946, a British culture ceremonial magician regarded these elementals as thought forms, which arise from the condition that the Lords of the Flame, Archangels, built up during the course of their work. These nature elementals, although being thought forms, have taken on life of their own. They have a personality, but not a divine spark, as we humans have. Thus, they have no soul, individually or higher self. These elemental thought forms can interact with humans and account for the traditional experiences we find in folklore. They are not malevolent by themselves, but they are amoral. 
when they manifest with unsuspecting people or invoke by or invoked by magicians one must take this into account and be careful in dealing with them so in the 17th century clergyman Robert Kurt from 1644 to 1692 was a clairvoyant and discovered another dimension inhabited by real by real though invisible people the fiery race or the fiery race who are generally associated with some location or feature in the landscape Dion Fortune viewed the lower astral spheres as also filled with numerous thought forms. Some of these thought forms were generated in the past, and having supplied them with strong emotions, worshipping and even sacrifices, and being artificially created by groups of people or by individual magicians. These artificial thought forms have an objective, eccentric, etheric existence. It is said that certain sacred, sacred, sacred places such as stone circles were endowed with an artificial elemental to protect the place against disrespectful visitors. Hence, the sightings of, for example, the sightings of for example, large black dogs at Stone Circle. The creation of an artificial elemental requires clear visualization, concentration, and especially emotion. They do require constant supply of energy, otherwise just wither away with time. There is a large variety of cryptic beings and strange ghostly forms which make themselves visible from time to time. And these are largely artificial elemental con elementals, consciously or unconsciously created. In the woods, people sometimes encounter strange, malformed, hazy entities of vaguely resembling humans. In her book, Psychic Self-Defense, Dion Fortune has this cool that is amazing information okay werewolves and dog man please rock that light um is that light getting a little too bright am i looking like an angel right now <laughs> anyway please rock that like and subscribe where you go would really appreciate that guys Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all your support. Okay, let's have a look at werewolves and dogmen. Werewolf is a typical European term with a long history. While in the USA, they generally use the term dogmen. These encounters usually happen in the woods, but are kind of rare. So... But when they do, they are quite frightening, even more than encountering a Bigfoot. But there are exceptions, as with Bigfoot. Some researchers assume that they are real physical beings, but they are not. Werewolves are physical manifestations of thought forms. They can be intentionally created and sent out to attack a targeted person. But they can also be created unintentionally by strong emotions, such as, as with all thought forms, they can become independent from their creator and then roam around. A clear example of creating a werewolf was by Dion Fortune in her book, Psychic self Defense. Mm. So werewolves or dogmen are essentially thought forms that have acquired independent existence, although they are in ex essence a subtile energy form 
living on the etheric or astral level, they become visible, but also temporarily acquire a physical state. So guys, once again, <clears throat> if you have any questions, please write these questions down. Bring them to Ishmael in his lives that he does, okay? Awesome, guys. So by the way, the shaking of the camper. Um, okay, well, I'll skip that part. Black dogs, black cats, and black humanoids. All right, let's have a look at this information. All right, please rock that like. So the black color is universal symbol, present in the collective unconscious associated with the omnius and the scary, or the scary, the fearful. Large black cats, although not always black in color, such as pumas and panthers, are seen in areas where they don't exist. Throughout recent history, there has been an endless stream of eyewitnesses and reports from across the entirety of Britain. They also are seen in the USA. These are thought forms, manifestations. They come and go quickly, leave no trace, and can't be hunted down. These sightings happened with repeated intervals in the same area, suggesting the existence of an energy vortex of some kind. Large black dogs have sometimes glowing red eyes. <clears throat> Sorry guys, that is my throat chakra. <laughs> All right, let's go back to that. Large dog, large black dogs have sometimes glowing red eyes, surely pointing to a supernatural origin. They can be sinister or malevolent, but some are merely protectors of certain places, F.E. stone circles, or can protect travelers at night. History has plenty of black dog sightings. These black dogs can easily become quite physical and be dangerous. There are historical examples of this in Suffolk, England on Sunday the 4th of August in 1577 between 9 and 10 in the morning while the parishioners of, of Bungay were at church. Okay, so there was a uh, a few people at a church, a fearful and violent storm broke out, which caused the sky to darken and the church to quake. Suddenly, in the midst of the storm, a black dog appeared within the church. Lit by flashes of fire, a large black dog ran about the body of the church, causing great fear and panic. It passed between two people, kneeling at prayer, killing them instantly and caused another man to shrivel up, severely burned, although he said to have survived. About seven miles away in another country or town, at around the same time, another black dog appeared in the parish church, preceded by the same thunderstorm. This black dog struck three people dead and left scorch marks on the North Church door, which can still be seen today. Mm. So deer man, goat man, and winged humanoids. Water monsters. All right, okay, gosh, we're getting into a lot of information for you guys. This is great. I might have to save some of this for another video. How strange it might sound, some manifestations are a human body with an animal head. Nothing new either, as we find representations of these beings in antique. Beings with horns are the deer man and the goat man. The Inuit people talk about shape-shifting, carburon, or people with strange and yes, often red glowing eyes. Dear woman tall in Ponca City or Pon yeah, Ponca City, Oklahoma, there is a legend of dear woman dear legs.
but upper torso of a woman. It all depends on the belief system, which is also in the collective con unconscious of, that pe of those people, of a particular group of people. Goat men are similar to the fonts of Greek mythology. Different forms of winged humanoids exist from dark, rather undefined forms to the well-defined Kappa Chupacabra. Chupacabra. I have no idea what that is. This last one is not the managed dog that mainstream media always talks about. Nice. All right, guys. So that's all I've got for you for now. So, yeah, there's a lot of information there. There's just, it goes really deep, really deep, this stuff. It goes so deep. All right. Please check out the links in the description box down below. There you'll find a link to our Telegram page and also to guided meditation. You'll also find a link to Ishmael Perez's website where you can find all of his courses and his two books, A Cosmic Origin and The Secret Government. If you like this video, please rock that like, subscribe and share. I appreciate all the subscribers, everybody who shares and everybody who watches. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your continued support. See you on the next video. Bye guys. Bye.